It's 4.13 p.m. Uh, just say 4 p.m. On Saturday, November 16th, 2024. And moving them to the second section of this row. I wanted to go over uh, what they did here. Check on their minerals as well. Uh, the cows and the sheep moved together. I guess they're both eager to move. Uh, they pretty much ate all the grass. Well, there's lots of grass here they could still eat if they wanted to. Patties are looking really good. I gave the cows 50 pounds of protein supplement about a day ago. Yeah, it was about yesterday. And the patties are looking a lot better, which tells me that uh, you probably don't need protein supplement. They could probably wait until later. Um, you know, when we actually run out of grass and the grass isn't growing anymore. Let's check the minerals. Oh, they're out. Okay, I'll have to get some minerals for the cows. Probably a good thing because the sheep shouldn't be eating the minerals. There's a salt block that they're absolutely destroying. Um, uh, that's a five pound salt block. Is it five pound or 50 pound? Yeah, it used to be 50 pounds, I think, right? I got it for like five bucks. And uh, that thing has licked down a lot. Let me get it away from the manure. From when I put it out there this afternoon. So I guess the cows like it or something. Um, maybe because they're out of minerals. They're eating the salt now. Don't know. Um, so when you look north, this is where they were the week before. Well, three days before. And that's a week before, just across the wire. Um, let me just kind of walk, show you. Looks like... You know, all the grass is dead. It's brown. There's some green grass left. Most of it's brown. Um, and then lots of manure. I noticed in this row that the manure is really dense. I really like the density of manure in this row. I'm really happy with that. And this is exactly one week ago. Um, this is before I moved the sheep with the cows. But you can already see the grass is growing back rapidly. Um... And this is Bermuda grass. This isn't a, a rye grass or anything like that. This is grass that was supposed to only grow in the summertime. That's like from May till September, but here we are in mid-November. And this is the week before, week and a half ago. Now let's go one more. I know that's where the water was because that's where the leak was. And this is uh, this is two weeks ago, right? So two weeks ago they were here uh, munching on grass. Um, pooping and peeing and two weeks ago I know for a fact that this looked exactly like it does in that previous row so you can see this Bermuda grass is really good um, the fact that it's growing in November is just blowing my mind right um, I did not expect Bermuda grass to keep growing this late into autumn and uh, we're just what four weeks away from the official start of winter you know, I'm just, my mind is blown here. This whole row is green. You step over here a little bit. You can see this row is starting to brown up a little bit. And then these next two rows are going to be brown. But there's an obvious progression here on how fast that Bermuda grass can recover from being grazed. Um, it's going to be ridiculous. Um, on that note, I was playing around with some numbers, and uh, my plan is to keep 10 steer back each year, more or less. Um, they take about three years to mature, raising them to weight, and then either slaughtering them or selling them, right? Uh, I'm sure someone at the sale barn would love to pick up a grass-fed steer. Um, the... The thought that I had was I'm going to be harvesting those steer, or getting rid of them at the very least, in the springtime, right? During calving season. when, Or maybe after calving season, maybe in June, a couple months after calves come. And so that's when the grass is growing like gangbusters, right? And so if I had my druthers, if I had... You know the freedom to move cows on and off the pasture and start and stop rotation if i could just like put the cows in the fridge or the freezer um, for months at a time i would run 
probably four times as many cows, probably 80 cattle in springtime. Um, maybe even more than that, you know. And then once the grass is gone, you know, then scale it back for the summer grass that I get. And then once that grass is gone in the wintertime, you know, take all the cows off altogether, right? And then get a bunch of cows next spring when the grass starts to grow. Right, that's kind of the ideal grazing situation is massive AUs, heavy impact in the spring, just destroy the field, right? Poop and pee and everything. Uh, just devour that spring ryegrass. One, maybe two passes. Um, we'll probably get away with only one because spring is so, so short here. It starts, the grass starts to grow a little bit in February. In March, you get like an inch. And then right about April, late March, early April, it starts to really take off like a rocket, you know. Um, I feel like I come back to the field and it's, it's gained another six inches every day. So um, my thought is that I do that stalker thing where I do the grass-fed steer. I try to sell them, try to get people lined up to buy them from me direct. But if I can't, then what I can do is sell those steer in June, once the spring grass runs out. And depending on how good the summer grass is or how good the spring was, you know, keeping more or less. But just basically keeping all of the steer calves, you know. So that's the thought that I had. And I think I'm going to do that this year's. I was planning on selling the steer calves, but I think I'm going to keep them. I'm going to sell all the heifer calves. There's no reason to keep any of the heifer calves. Um, starting next spring, I'm basically going to keep all the heifer calves, right? And uh, breed them back two years later. Um, increase the, the South Pole genetics. And then phase out uh, the older cows. And uh, so for a long time, I'm just going to be having young heifers. I'm going to have like one, one, two, three-year-old heifers on my pasture. And then uh, take them to the sale barn or sell them to somebody. Um, I could sell bred heifers. I could sell bred cows. But I want to, you know, start rapidly replacing the genetics in my, flock, in my herd here. So that's kind of the goal. Um, and that means keeping all the heifers that are born that have South Pole genetics in them. So that first generation, um, you know, we'll get two years of 50% heifers or 50% South Pole. And that third year, because that first crop of heifers are ready to breed, you know, so that would be 2028. So 2028, assuming I get 10 heifer calves in 2020, you know, next year, 2025. So in spring of 2020, no wait, hold on, spring of 2027, I should be getting 75%, three quarters South Pole, right? And then 2028, three quarters again. And then 2029, I should be getting five eighths, which I think five eighths is pretty much all South Pole. You know, I'll keep that up for probably until 2035 or 2040. I don't know if I can be doing this in 2040. Um, I'll be what? I'm almost 50 years now, right? So in 2040, I'll be like 65, you know? So I'll be, I'll be getting old, right? Maybe this will keep me healthy and young. But uh, at that point, um, I will just be working in an office telling people what to do, uh, or I won't be doing it at all. Uh, there's no way I can... Um, keep up with the farm and what I, all that I want to do anyway so that's kind of the goal with the breeding and uh, the stocking density and the stock rate and all that kind of stuff so uh, last little note um, I really want to do chickens I really really want to do chickens but there's no way I can do the manpower for that um, if you know somebody who wants to do chickens um, I'll basically pay them to do it on my land. Um, we'll figure out, but I'll definitely pay because I'll be getting dividends from the chicken manure, right? So if you know some young guy in the Northeast Texas area who wants to try chickens, um, I'll basically pay him to do it. I don't, I mean, I'll buy the chickens. Maybe I'll just give him the money to buy the chickens for himself. And then uh, we could figure out logistics of how much feed, um, all that kind of stuff but I definitely want to see chickens running on this land I think I think that's the next step in fertility is getting chickens going so if you know somebody if you want to do it let me know um, let's talk let's figure something out but uh, this next year 
um, if I can get chickens out here, I will be happy as a clam, you know, even if it's only 50 chickens, like one batch, 50 chickens, we're just doing an experiment run. Um, I'll do whatever I can to support you. I've got lots of friends. I might be able to sell, ooh gosh, maybe a hundred chickens. Um, people that are willing to try it. Um, and if the chickens are good, which, you know, our chickens were good. It's the best chicken I ever had. Um, Freedom Rangers grown on pasture with feed. Um, we should be able to increase our, our sales. We should be able to find people willing to buy, um, not just like hundreds of customers willing to buy two or three birds each, but uh, maybe a, a local grocer or somebody like that willing to stock them and uh, sell them at their health food shop. Maybe there's places in Dallas that would love to buy pasture chickens, you know. Um, that's, that's the work um, that I'm not really able to do. Uh, we're starting a restaurant this next year and there's a chance that we might start construction on a house next year as well. So with those two things on my plate, um, I won't be able to do much leg work for the chickens. Um, but if somebody wants to do the leg work and is willing to do an experiment with me, I'm more than happy to pay for it, you know. Um, so let me know. Guys, have a great day. Take care and bye-bye.